king builds bridges, right? True king builds bridges. Hello guys, today we're going to review the movie Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom but before we continue, don't forget to hit that like button, share this video, comment, subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so you'll be updated when new content comes out. With the reboot of the DC Universe under James Gunn and Peter Safran, the projects that were created before the pair took the stage had an air of failure on them. While there were potentially interesting films like Blue Beetle and The Flash, the people behind the scenes felt all their efforts might be for naught and this feeling somehow transferred onto the films and the audiences. The films felt assembly line produced and the audience lost all excitement. People were just going through the motions. With Aquaman The Lost Kingdom, I felt that everyone in the project just raised their hands in defeat and stopped caring. Being the last movie in the so-called DCEU, I was hoping that the franchise would at least end on a high note and a feast for the senses but we get nothing but a cockroach infested burger. Plagued by numerous problems, the Aquaman sequel shows the effects of behind the scenes mishandling of the property. And the success of the first movie only highlights the failure of the sequel on almost every level. This movie is as derivative as it can get with the plotline that would make the Fast and Furious franchise blush. The sequel explores the theme of family like it was written by Vin Diesel. What happens in the movie has been seen countless times before, two former enemies being forced to unite against a foe. Talking about the foe, Black Manta offers nothing new to the table and what's worse is that the real final villain felt like an escapee from the ghost army of Return of the King. The movie also goes into environmental mode with climate change a factor in the movie. I was expecting to see that green know-it-all brat Greta Thunberg to suddenly appear and lecture the audience about her feelings. The cast felt like they were just out to get a paycheck. None of the joy that was felt in the first movie is present here. Jason Momoa exudes charm and fun, but whatever positivity he emits is overpowered by the incoming doom of his universe by James Gunn's hands. It is disappointing to see him invest so much in his character only to be met by corporate incompetence. Patrick Wilson is back as Orm and has at least a decent character arc. Amber Heard's Mera has a negligible presence in the film likely brought about by real-life shenanigans. Dolph Lundgren lends a drunken sailor aura in all his scenes. Maybe he was thinking that this is Expendables goes to the beach. Nicole Kidman is wasted here with her character only good for motherly words. The visual effects in the sequel are not as grand and stimulating compared to the first movie. There were also instances when the CGI felt poorly rendered and looked like a PlayStation 1 cutscene. There were attempts to enhance the action through long tracking shots but the action still felt substandard. It is really sad that a character that had great potential ending this way. This movie is just Warner Brothers raising the white flag up but was supposed to be the world diving into the mythos of the DC characters ended up with the whole franchise just drowning and eventually sleeping with the fishes. So that's the review for Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom. This has been Kulas for Tambay Reviews. Thank you for watching. Keep on playing.